This is a total body workout with dumbbells and a stability ball. You will need a stability ball, a set of dumbbells, a mat, a towel, and of course, water for hydration. There will be 10 exercises, each one lasting about 45 to 60 seconds. The first one is dumbbell chest press with ISO pelvic thrust. Keep in mind while doing this exercise, your body should be in bridge form with your head and shoulders on the ball, and your glutes off the ball with your knees directly over your feet. To start, sit on the ball, slowly walk forward, and at the same time, lie down on the ball. Make sure your head and shoulders are on the ball, your pelvis is up, your glutes are off the ball, and your knees are over your feet. Breathe out as you press the weights upward and inward. Bring the elbow down as far as you can and always keep your abs and your core tight. Do 15 reps, all the while keeping your glutes off the ball. Breathe as you go up, keeping a steady balance on the ball without too much movement from side to side. After you're done, slowly push yourself back on top of the ball and sit. Now for the second exercise, squat thrust. Here, you want to really focus on staying on top of the ball. When you go down, if you go down too far, you will slip off the ball. So make sure that there's always a slight angle. To begin, sit on the ball and slowly walk forward. Keep your hands in a prayer-like position right above your chest. Squat down and as you extend your legs straight up, reach up over your head and breathe out. Come down slow and breathe out on the full extension upward. Make sure you're always on the ball at a slight angle and never completely at 90 degrees. Nice and steady, keeping traction on your feet Breathe as you push up. Bring it down all the way. Push your hands over your head. Breathe, full extension of the body. Be careful not to go all the way back too far or bring it down too far. You want to do 15 reps. Breathe out, reach, and extend your body. Stretch and come back down. Keep in mind, your core should always be tight. Breathe and extend up and bring it down. Keep your knees tracked over your toes. Legs slightly apart. Now, round down on the ball. When you're done, Slowly push yourself back up and sit on the ball. The third exercise is supine on the ball with isopelvic thrust and side shifts. Balance on the ball so that the ball is completely underneath your head and shoulders. Be careful not to push sideways too far. To begin, sit on the ball and walk forward so that your knees are over your feet and legs slightly spread apart. Spread your arms apart into a T formation and slowly push from side to side. Breathe out every time you move from one side to the other side while keeping your core tense and your glutes squeezed tight. Your glutes are off the ball. Go from side to side as much as you comfortably can without feeling like you're going to fall off the ball. At all times, keep steady, breathe from side to side, keeping the core strong, Breathe. When you're done, slowly sit back up on the ball. Exercise number four is supine on ball and frontal raise. Keep your body in a tabletop formation and bridge formation shoulders on the ball and glutes off the ball.
To begin, sit on the ball and walk forward so that your head and shoulders are on the ball and your glutes are in the air. Keep your arms straight, extend over your head, and all the way down to the front of your hips. Breathe out when you lift them up over your head and bring them down slow with total control. Keeping yourself on the ball, glutes off the ball, your knees track over your feet, legs slightly apart. Go nice and steady with total control. Get a nice even stretch over your head and bring it down right before you hit the ground. All the way down, breathe out on the way up, keeping the abs and core firm all throughout the exercise. Squeeze the glutes tight. Maintain 90 degrees at your knees. Exercise number five is a dumbbell overhead extension into crunch. Make sure the ball contours to your lower back so that you can crunch without falling off the ball. To begin, sit on the ball, lie down so that the ball contours to your lower back. When you extend your arms over your head, lightly touch the ball. As you come up, come into a crunch. Keep your arms crossed and crunch up, reaching forward. Reach your arms back, touch the ball behind you, crunch up, reach your arms straight forward. Bend your arms as you come back down on the ball. Straighten up as you come up. You want to breathe out when you come up and thrust. Make sure your knees don't go over your big toes with legs slightly apart at all times. Breathe out all the while maintaining steady control. Breathe out as you come up. Always keep your abs tight throughout the exercise. Firm grip on the weight, working on the full arms, the abs, and the shoulders. Breathe out, crunch up, breathe. The ball should not move at all and you should go up and down as you exercise. Keep a nice and steady rhythm, same pace going down and same pace going up. Exercise number six is a pelvic thrust on the ball with arm pull downs. This exercise is a pelvic thrust with your arms straight up and down in the opposite direction. Make sure you maintain an angle so that you don't fall off the ball and the ball doesn't slip away from you. To begin, get into a pelvic thrust tabletop position. As you thrust your pelvis up into the air, Keep your arms straight and bring them down at your sides. Breathe out when you thrust up. Your legs slightly spread apart with your knees at 90 degrees and above your feet. Keep your head and shoulders on the ball and the arms straight all throughout the exercise. Keep your core tense all throughout. Excellent job. Exercise number seven is one leg on ball and side bend. During this exercise, stand on one leg with the other leg resting on the ball. Go slow and steady to maintain balance. To begin, stand on one leg, bring a weight to your waist and lift your other leg up and extend on the ball. Make sure it's a comfortable distance so that you have total control. Trying to keep your legs straight, bend down and touch the ground as far as you can. Breathe out on the way up. The instability of the ball makes your core and stabilizers work much harder. 
This exercise works your hamstrings and glutes. Hold the weight in the opposite hand and place it on your hip. This stabilizes the exercise. Go nice and slow, keeping the core tense all throughout the exercise. Breathe out on the way up. To repeat the other side, simply move the ball over, stand, and make sure you gauge the balance and do the same. Try to keep your legs straight as best you can. Bend down and touch the ground or your toes. By bending the knees a little bit, it helps with the exercise. It works a little bit of the quads, but overall the deadlift works the hamstrings and the glutes. Again, all throughout the exercise, keep your core firm and tense as you breathe out on the way up focusing on the hamstrings and glutes on the way. Go nice and steady to maintain your balance. Exercise number eight is a ball squat and frontal raise. This exercise involves you, the floor, and the ball. Make sure you have perfect squatting position and always keep the knees tracked over the big toes. To begin, hold it to the outside of the ball, keeping your arms straight. Squat down with your posture perfect pushing your butt back a little. Go down and touch the ground with the ball and as you squat up, extend your arms up over your head. Breathe out on the way up, keeping even pressure on the heel and toes when you go up and down. This exercise works glutes, quads, and shoulders. Maintain a light curve in the lower back. Always keep the core firm and tense throughout the exercise. Exercise number nine is supine thrust and leg curls. This exercise requires you to focus and maintain a pelvic thrust position as you curl and pull the ball in and push it out. Never let the glutes down. To begin, lie down on the mat with legs up on the ball and heels touching the ball. Breathe out and pull the ball into your glutes. Then fully extend the ball out until you squeeze your quads. All the while, keep your core tense and never allow the glutes to fall back down to the ground. Breathe out as you curl the ball in as much as you can and push it out as much as you can. Go at a nice and steady pace. You must always have total control. This exercise works your glutes, a little bit of the hands, and a little bit of the shoulders and arms. You're doing a great job, only one more exercise to go. And now for the last exercise, exercise number 10, is a reverse crunch with ball lift. Keep in mind to hold everything firm and tight. Grab the ball a little bit on the outside and pull it up as high as you can, slowly lowering down, touching the ground. To begin, Lie down on the floor, wrap your legs around the outside of the ball, tense up the abs, breathe out and pull the knees up to your chest with the ball as high up as you can go. Keep the abs tight, breathe out as you pull the knees to the chest. This exercise works the core, which are your abdomen and your hip flexors. Now don't forget to rehydrate and get ready to start the second circuit. We'll be doing the same exercises, but with no tutorials this time.
Congratulations on reaching circuit number two. At this point, you've done circuit one and you should be really proud of yourself. Hope you guys are feeling great. For this first exercise, you want to always go as low as you can on the elbows. Now you should choose a ball size that is appropriate for your body. You need to pick one that when you lie down on it, you can draw a straight line from your shoulders to your hip to your knees. Pick a weight that is comfortable for you to use so that within 15 reps, numbers 13, 14, and 15 should feel like you're straining in order to get those weights up. Always hold your body in a straight line. Exercise number two. We go into a squat, then into an overhead reach and stretch. Make sure you're staying hydrated. You should definitely be feeling the burn by this point. Some things to keep in mind. Keep your knees right above your ankles and your feet when you squat down. You should never push or protrude your knees past your toes. When you push up, breathe up, tense, and stretch as far as you can. Try to do this exercise on a surface that has traction because when you squat down and there's no traction, the ball will most likely slip out from underneath you really easily. Two down, eight to go. In this exercise, we're gonna shift from side to side. The important part here is that you keep your glutes and your core tense at all times. As you shift, imagine yourself rolling on top of the ball from one side of the shoulder to the other. Breathe out each and every shift, keeping the glutes up off the ground and make sure that your abs, your back, and your glutes are tight. Keep your feet wider than your shoulders to maximize your balance. Shift from side to side as much as you can, but always maintain perfect control. This exercise should give you some much needed rest. Almost halfway there now, guys, you can do it. Choose a pair of dumbbells that you have complete control over, but not too light that they don't do anything. Maintaining perfect balance on the ball, you want your legs spread apart a little bit wider than your shoulders, and you need to look at the side angle of your body. Your knees should be bent at 90 degrees and held still. Keep perfect balance to ensure that you don't fall off the ball and that you're focusing on your shoulders better. Go at a nice and steady pace. Never jerk, never swing, never go with momentum. Always breathe out when you contract the muscles. Make sure you're staying hydrated, guys. We're halfway there. Great job. As you go through this exercise, keep the ball still. Do not move the ball at all. The only part of your body that should be moving is your upper body, your abdomen, and your hips. The glutes and the legs are perfectly still. You wanna breathe out on the way up and tense up on the push. Go slow but steady, not too fast. Always maintain perfect control and perfect rhythm throughout the exercise. If the weight is too heavy, select a lighter weight and continue again. 
you should feel the burn within 13, 14, 15 of the reps. Keep even pressure on the heels and toes always. Now we're moving on to exercise number six. Are you feeling it yet? This move is a combo where you do both a pelvic thrust along with a frontal raise with your arms. The ball moves slightly, so make sure that you don't go too slow so that the ball slips out from underneath you. Keep even pressure on your heels and toes all throughout the exercise. You wanna push your pelvis up as high as you can and focus on squeezing your glutes when you do so. Select a set of weights that you can comfortably control with your arms straight for 15 reps with a minor burn around numbers 13, 14, and 15. Breathe out when you thrust up. When you come up, bring your arms down. Exercise number seven. Now, I love this move. Select a weight that is comfortable for you when you do a one leg deadlift. If it is too heavy, then you will have to struggle more with the balance and that's not a good thing. Again, the ball size should be about knee height or slightly bigger so that it goes higher up. Everyone's flexibility is different, so you may want to select a smaller ball for easier balance. The bigger the ball, the harder the balance. To make it a little bit easier on the one leg deadlift, you can also bend your knee a little in order to go down lower and have more muscles helping out with the exercise. Bending the knee incorporates the quads more, so now you have three muscle groups that are primary movers. Your quads, your hamstrings, and your glutes. Exercise number eight. You're doing great guys, we're almost there. In the squatting position, you always have to make sure your posture is perfect. When you squat down, your upper body should be upright, never bending forward. Keep your legs apart wider than your shoulders. Make sure your balance is good. When you bend your knees to balance, make sure they bend toward your toes, but not over your toes. Keeping your arms straight, you'll ensure a better workout on the shoulders. Exercise number nine, you're rocking it. Great job, guys. Place your legs on top of the ball so that the heel part touches the top of the ball. Thrust your body up as high as you can and maintain it. 
Then pull your heels into your glutes as much as you can and then extend out with your legs fully extended to squeeze and contract your quads. This exercise works your hamstrings, a little bit of your glutes, and your core. Keeping your arms down by your side will help you better with your balance. If you'd like to challenge yourself more, keep your palms facing up. Always maintain balance throughout the exercise. Exercise 10, last one. Great work, guys. By now, your muscles are all worked up. This move is another favorite of mine. So lay on your back, and to help with the balance, have your arms facing down. If you want to challenge yourself more, keep your palms up. With your palms facing up, you're helping with your posture alignment because your shoulders will be pressed out and back and down a little bit more than normal. Wrapping the legs a little bit on the outside of the ball will help you hold onto the ball much better. If you'd like to challenge yourself more, have your legs on top of the ball and have it hook into your body. By reaching this stage, you are amazing. We're on the home stretch now. You've done such a great job and now you're gonna bring it home by giving it all you got. Exercise one. Let's start off with a chest press while holding yourself in a pelvic thrust. To get the body you want, make every move challenging enough for you so that by the time you reach 15 reps, you're strong, you're pushing through a burn, and you're going all out. This is the last of the three circuits and you're well on your way to working out everything you want, from strengthening to toning to making your body a fine, strong machine. To focus here, you want a nice round tush. Push up high and squeeze the chest and squeeze the shoulders when you do your chest press. Moving on to exercise number two. This one focuses on your quads and glutes. So with your legs apart, you will work on your glutes much more. By having your legs closer together and parallel, you work your quads more and you also work on the glutes, but not as hard. This is a good time to stretch out your body from the earlier strenuous chest exercise. You want to stretch so that you have a little bit of recovery while you burn the butt out and maintain perfect posture and perfect balance on the ball. Time for exercise number three. Seven more and you've made it through. We're almost there. This is another time to stretch and relax, but again, it's working on your core. Keep your arms straight. To challenge your core more with your obliques and your arms, go further to the side where you strain but are not giving up total control. Balance is the primary key and you wanna go as strong as you can from side to side. Go as fast as you can, but only to the point where you have total control. Keeping the glutes squeezed tight and pushing up above the ground will really help you burn up that butt and really shape it finely. Always keep your legs further apart than your shoulders. Exercise number four. 
This one works your shoulders, so select a weight that is comfortable for you so that you don't burn out quickly, but challenge yourself. Circuit number three requires that you go strong and because you know all of the moves already, your body needs a little bit of an extra challenge. So do so by giving a nice, firm tenseness of your arms and your glutes. Keep the butt high and your legs apart always. This will ensure that your glutes, your quads, and your back are always working so that they get shaped up faster. Now we're moving on to exercise number five. You're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We're almost there. This one works your triceps and abs. Keep your legs apart further than your shoulders. This ensures that you have better balance and you're working on the glutes as well. Always breathe out on the way up when you contract the muscles in this exercise. With the back contoured to the ball, the ball should not move at all. This is the key. By trying to maintain a perfect balance on the ball without moving it, you're focusing more on your triceps, your core, and your abs, which is what you want to do. When you extend back, go as far as you can, but never feel like you're going to fall off the ball. Exercise number six, keep your energy up. Make sure you're drinking water. This exercise focuses on your glutes. So by having your legs further apart, you're working on your glutes much harder and this is a great chance for you to really squeeze the glutes to firm it up and shape it up into a bubble butt. Breathe out when you thrust up. Select a nice and heavy weight so that you feel a burn right away. This is the third circuit so you should push yourself. You've gone two circuits, and at this point, your body needs that little extra challenge. You can do it. The results you'll get are what you put into it. Exercise number seven. This one is a balance move, so the weight you should select should always complement your ability to balance and move through the exercise. To work here, you focus on the hamstrings and glutes. As you go down, focus on getting a nice stretch on your hamstrings and glutes, and breathe out and squeeze up the same muscles you stretch to go down. To make it a little bit easier, you can always bend the leg you're standing on for better balance. You're doing a great job. You're probably going to be a little bit sore tomorrow, so make sure you drink plenty of water and stretch. You should also drink a protein shake within 30 minutes of your workout to give your muscles the nutrients they need to rebuild themselves.
Moving on to exercise number eight. You're doing a great job and have made it so far. You should be really proud of yourself. By slowing down the movement, you actually work your quads and glutes much harder. By keeping proper posture, your spine alignment works very well and very hard. You've worked your muscles really hard by this point, so make sure that you get plenty of rest and drink plenty of water so that they can rebuild themselves. Exercise number nine. Two more to go, guys. You're doing great. Increasing the reps will work the hamstrings and glutes. By slowing down the movement, you'll work your hamstrings and glutes even more. By keeping your pelvic thrust up as high as you can, you'll work your hamstrings, back, and glutes. You're on your third circuit, so you need to go all out on this exercise to maximize your return. You can do it. This is circuit number three, and you're very, very well on your way. And now for the final exercise, number 10. This is the best part of the workout here, guys. In most exercises, when you crunch, you contract from the upper abs down to the lower. In this one, we're starting from the lower part of the abs, the part that crosses over from your hip flexors and psoas in order to contract and go up. To work harder, go up as high as you can and then bring it down. Lightly touch the ball on the ground and then bring it up again. Congratulations, you did it.